I'm Todd Baker, Principal of Empowerment Ergonomics and the Lead Ergonomics Consultant for the Cornell Musculoskeletal Injury Prevention Program. We are pleased to bring you this series with tips for improving comfort and productivity while working from home. Today's topic, seating. Sitting is one of the simplest and most natural things we do as humans. Have a seat. Relax. One of the main goals of this presentation today is to get back to the basics of sitting at work. So let me start with a question. If you were sitting on the back patio getting some sun or sitting by the lake reading a good book or maybe sitting in your recliner watching your favorite sports team on the television, would you be sitting up straight? Of course not. When we're sitting at our computer workstation, sometimes we tend to overthink it. There are certainly reasons why we sit differently at work. We don't want to be perceived as slouching or being too lazy, or maybe the chair doesn't fit you properly or isn't adjusted correctly. That's why I want to review seating basics. Consider these principles in order to be more comfortable while sitting at your home workstation. Fit. How does the chair fit your body? A couple different dimensions to consider. One is seat height. Ideally, your feet will reach the floor comfortably while you're sitting in the chair with your thighs relatively horizontal. If the chair is too low, maybe there's something you can do to either adjust it higher or use some sort of a cushion to elevate your body. If the chair is too high and your feet don't reach the floor comfortably, consider something to support your feet, whether it's an inexpensive commercially available footrest or whether it's something that you uh, find around the house. The old three ring binder training manuals that are gathering dust uh, can, can make an effective footrest. The next dimension is seat depth. You want to make sure that your chair allows you to scoot your pelvis all the way back uh, to reach the back support of the chair. The goal is to be able to sit back in the chair and relax. But now a few words about sitting posture. Let's consider a couple different ways that we can achieve good posture. Oftentimes, whether it's because of poor design or because of our behavior, we feel compelled to Try to attain good posture actively, meaning you're sitting up straight, engaging all the muscles in your torso in order to create good posture. Unfortunately, in this scenario, you're fighting a losing battle. Gravity is undefeated. By engaging those muscles in your torso for extended periods of time, after a rather short period of time, those muscles will fatigue. And if they don't have a chance to recover, we will actually create a risk factor called static tension or static loading where those muscles are contracted without a chance to rest. All right, that's where you may feel some burning or some tension in, in those muscles. And that is not a sustainable way to sit. As the musculature fatigues, the posture inevitably deteriorates. And while we've been working hard to try to attain good posture, maybe a actually uh, sitting in a posture that is truly risky. Notice the rounded spine, the forward head position, which compresses the cervical spine. These postures can contribute to discomfort or injury over time. Rather than trying to maintain posture actively, consider how we can use our chair to maintain good posture passively for longer periods of time. If the chair fits properly, we can scoot the pelvis all the way back against the backrest, lean back in the chair, and with a slightly reclined posture, the musculature supporting the torso can relax and recover. The musculature relaxes, and we achieve a much more sustainable way of sitting. Notice there are no 90-degree angles in the joints of the body. The hips, knees, and even as the arms hang comfortably, and the elbows are all slightly more open than 90 degrees, which is preferable skeletal alignment. Even if you don't have a more adjustable office chair, the chairs that you have at home can be creatively modified to promote good fit and postural support. Even if it's not perfect, the body will be supported and we will be able to address those postural deficiencies with the next principle, which is movement. The best way to reduce or prevent discomfort from postural issues is to change your position as frequently as possible. It's recommended that you get up out of your chair and move around every half hour. If that's not practical, at a minimum on an hourly basis. Prolonged sitting an hour or longer starts to have a detrimental effect on the metabolic systems of the body. Sitting for multiple hours has such a damaging metabolic impact that we might not be able to undo that damage 
with exercise, getting up and moving frequently is critical. Even though it may seem counterproductive to get up and away from your computer so often, in fact, you will find that you're able to maintain more consistent productivity throughout the course of the day by staying active. So now that we have some strategies for sitting more comfortably at home, the next video in our series will talk about how to accommodate our workstation and our work tools to that better seated position. Be sure to check out more clips from the Wellbeing at Cornell series on YouTube.